Hi, we're going to wrap up Unit 8 uh, with Section 8-6, Choosing a Factory Method. Remember to take something out to take notes on, pause the video anytime to write your notes, and complete the check it out problems after each of the examples on your worksheet. Our two learning targets today, I can choose an appropriate method for factoring a polynomial, and I can combine methods for factoring a polynomial. So our first example, we want to tell whether each expression is completely factored, and if not, we want to factor it. So completely factored means there is no, there are no factors in common. So here, we already have 3x squared out front. Now let's look within the parentheses there, our grouping. Here we can factor out a 2. They have the greatest common factor of 2, leaving us with 3x minus 2. So we can multiply 2 by 3 and get 6x squared times 3x minus 2. And now we are completely factored. For b, we look inside each of our binomials. x plus one, x squared plus 1 is fully factored, and x minus 5 is. So here it is fully factored. We can't pull any other factors out. It's done. And I know you're probably thinking, but wait a minute, our last lesson we had, this is a squared term, and that's a squared term, the difference being we're adding. So it needs to be the difference of two squares. If we subtracted, those would be perfect squares. So keep in mind, you see something like x squared plus 4, it's the sum of squares. And we only can factor the difference of two squares. So here are your two check it outs. Can you fully factor, are they fully factored? If not, do so. So these are the steps we're using we've been using, it's kind of summarized here nice, nicely here, to factor a polynomial, our first step is to check for any of the greatest common factors. You're looking for your GCFs. Can we pull anything out? Like in our last example, we pulled the 3 out of each term. Then check for a pattern. In our last lesson, we talked about the difference of two squares. So if you have two binomials, or a perfect square trinomial, if you have a trinomial are the first and last term, perfect squares. The next step, if you have the form x squared plus bx plus c, so your a is 1, look for two numbers who sum to b and product is c. So you're looking for sum to b, product to c, product of c. When you have an a, a coefficient in front of the x squared instead of 1, you want to check for factors of a and factors of c so the sum of the products of the adderant in a term should give you your b term. So just factor. When all said and done, take one more check to make sure you have all your common factors factored out. And if not, repeat these steps again. So here we want to check to see if these are fully factored. In our first example, we have a 10, 48, and 32. Well, those are all even numbers. So I know I at least can pull a 2 out leaving 5x squared plus 24x plus 16. So now the next step, I have a trinomial. I have three terms. So let's see if I can factor that any further. So I carry down my 2, the factor I factored out. I know factors of 5 are just 5 and 1. So my terms have to be 5x and x to get my 5x squared. For 16, Ah, if I put a 16 has 4 and 4, if I put a 4 here, 4 would have to go there, both have to be positive, I get my 20x and 4x, and I'll get my 24x. So this will be fully factored here. And you can distribute and double check. Now here we have, look at our coefficients. We have a coefficient of 8 and 18, both even again, so let's factor a 2 out. Now we have x to the 6 and x squared. When your exponents are even, or in this case, they each have an x squared there. And then we have a y squared and a y squared, we can factor that out also. Leaving us with 4, x to the 4th, because I already pulled x squared out, so I have x to the 4th, y squared came out, minus 9, and that's 6, I have x squared, y squared there. So make sure I got my 8x, x to the 6, y squared, minus 18x squared, y squared. Nice. Now, can I factor any further? 
I see subtraction. Oh, let's see, 4x to the 4th will go into 2x squared and 2x squared, so that's nice. And 9 will go into 3 and 3. So I carry everything down, 2x squared y squared times 2x squared minus, or plus 3, it could be minus also, or 2x squared minus 3. And we are fully factored now. Can't go any further. So here is your chance to take a crack at this. Take a stab and see how you do. You've got two terms. Again, look for completely factoring them out. Greatest common factors and go from there. Back to factoring still. This whole unit's factoring. And so here we have a trinomial. Two is not a perfect square, so that's not going to work with our perfect square trinomial. So let's take a cut at it. Let's go 3x and 3x gets our 9x squared. Why did I start there? 9 and 1 are pretty far apart. So 3 and 3 are the same. Get a positive, we're going to need one positive, one negative to get a negative 2. And if I put my 2 here, that can be a positive 6x, and a 1 here, negative 3x. And that will come up with our factored form. For this, for b, we can factor out a 12b, leaving us with b squared, plus 4b plus 4. Now we have to look inside our grouping. Can we factor this any further? Both are going to be positive signs because it's positive and positive. Factors of 4, so try 2 and 2, because here we have difference of perfect squares. I'm sorry, perfect square trinomial, b and b, 2 and 2. So it's going to factor 12b times b plus 2 squared. For c, we can factor out a 4 from each term. It is y squared plus 3y minus 18. And notice now our, our coefficient here is a 1. Makes it nice. We don't have to worry about the factors for that. One has to be positive, one has to be negative to get negative 18. 18, we have 6 and 3, positive 6, and a negative 3. We'll work for that. So here's our factored form for this one. These are kind of fun, aren't they? So here, let's see, you have a binomial. Are they perfect squares? Uh, actually, before we do that, let's factor out, I'm skipping the first step, let's factor out an x squared from both of these, giving us x squared minus 1. Now, we still have, these are perfect squares, so we're going to get x squared times x plus 1 times x minus 1, and that's fully factored. Whoops, that didn't work so well. <laughs> So there's our answer there. Now it's your turn. You have four check it out to do for this. Again, same steps. Factor out the greatest common factor first. If it's a trinomial, perfect square trinomial. If it's a binomial, difference of two, difference of two squares. And keep factoring. So to summarize this, these are what we've been working on through this unit. So for any polynomial, look for the greatest common factor. Factor it out. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to be a lot easier to take those out and then continue to factor than do it at the end. When you only have two terms, you have binomials, look for the difference of two squares. Again, it has to be a square minus a square. If you have three terms, look for a perfect square trinomial or other factorable trinomials. And Last, if you have a polynomial with four or more terms, look for grouping. We did that a couple lessons ago. So some methods for to factor polynomials. Bring any questions to class, and thanks.